Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to another painting demo. Now this one is for a member of our uh, my website, Pure Watercolour. Um, he was having difficulty painting this mountain scene and it was quite complicated to actually have to describe what's happening. So I decided to, best thing I could do was actually do a tutorial and um, do it that way. So uh, hopefully, I, I've I, I sped it up by two because if not, the actual painting time... The painting took me an hour and 10 minutes. It would be too long to, to, to run it as a video. Uh, people get bored just watching me paint the same area. So I um, I sped it up times two, and uh, that way you should uh, still be able to see exactly what I'm doing. Okay, straight into it. Well, I start with the sky, and I use a little bit of cobalt blue and a little bit of uh, cadmium red just to grey it out slightly. And I, t I turn the board upside down. I just find it easier when you're doing the sky to actually get the line you're following to turn the board upside down. Now, I wasn't sure at this time whether I'd gone a little bit too dark with the sky um, initially because obviously it was all white paper around it and I felt I might have done. But anyway, I think it turns out okay in the end. So uh, you'll see. So just bear in mind when you're doing your sky that uh, you pitch it at the right value, the right colour, tone, whatever. And, um, yeah, get it right, basically. Okay, now we're back to turning the um, board around and we're, we're going to start with mixing some colour for where the sun's, sun hits the top of the mountain. That's a crucial part of this painting because it takes the viewer's eye right into the, into the work. So I just started with a little bit of um, alizarin crimson and a little bit of cadmium yellow. And I mixed kind of a various mix of that. So I had one pool of it, but in parts it was slightly stronger with alizarin and less crimson and vice versa. So there was a varied mix in that, in that wash. So now you've really got to, when you do this, you've just got to lay the colour on, but you've really got to study the photo, your reference image. It's important to have a good, you know, a, a, um, Good idea to, re to really study it so you, so you know exactly where to put the colour. If you just sort of slap it on willy-nilly, it's probably going to cost you in the end, you know, because you're going to lose the luminosity. So anyway, I didn't want to mix any other colours with this. I wanted to just lay this wash first and wait for it to dry, then go over it with subsequent washes. So this painting is all about, the stage of the painting especially, is all about creating layers and letting layers work for you. And it's all about using warm and cool colours. So uh, obviously the cool colours on top of the warm colours make that warm colour look more intense and uh, bright. So uh, that's what happened. Now I do apologise for any background noise. There's lots of kids playing outside today. So uh, we'll just have to run with that, I'm afraid. I need to get this online. And I'm just going on the top of the ridge of the mountains, adding more of the same mixture. Uh, cadmium red, a little touch of alizarin crimson, keeping it ever so simple. This is a very simple palette of colours in here. Um, I'll make a list of the colours for you and put it in the description. You can read those off, so me going through them all. Um, anyway, got those down. I was really pleased to map those colours out and I could see where I was going a bit better then. And the blue started to look better, I thought, at this point. So now I wanted to start describing the rocks. All I did was add a little bit of cobalt blue to that same mixture that I did for the sunlight uh, hitting the tops. So the same mixture, I just added a little bit of cobalt blue to that just to make it a bit browner. And I started to describe the rocks um, on the top of the mountain. I'm just zooming in a bit here to give you a better view. I'm really hoping it focuses. Does it? Yeah. And I'm just starting to put the actual rocks in. Um, and I, in play, now I'm, I'm using the edge of the brush now just to get a broken effect so it's not all dabs of blobs of colour. So we can actually get a broken effect uh, to describe the rocks on the top of the mountain. Doesn't look like much at this point. It doesn't really come into play. Things don't start to work until you, until you start adding the cooler colours and the darks. So you've got to be patient this time. It's easy to look at your work and think to yourself, oh, it's not working. I'll give up on this one. You've got to stick with it um, until you've got those final washes on and then you'll know whether the painting is going to work or not. 
So again, you can see there's a good example of using the broken stroke, the side of the brush, just move it very quickly over the page and the tooth of the paper will just take off bits of paint. And, uh, oh, the dogs have started. Okay. I'm going to just work my way across the ridge of the mountain. That looks very harsh at the moment. It looks very unnatural. But, God, dogs everywhere. Blimey. Sorry about that. And uh, anyway, so now we move on to the area where we're going to start adding the cooler colour, I think. Let me just go back. So we're just adding some cobalt blue to the... Uh, we're going to lay a wash of cobalt blue and a little bit of uh, alizarin crimson over this just to... Uh, start to build up the, the depth within the rocks, you know, the shadow areas, essentially. We just carry on doing that as we move our way across the paper. We just work from, I was working from left to right. <coughs> and just adding the colour. Not even varying it, it's just, it's just one pool of blue and a little bit of uh, alizarin crimson just to make it a bit purpley. And I'm just going over the washes, makes them sit back a bit now, you see, makes them not look so uh, harsh. So keep working your way along. This is why I do it in t uh, times two speed wise because it would be very boring to sit there and watch me just do this very very slowly. I don't think people would stay very long, um, so uh, it's better to speed it up a little bit. I'm just intensifying the blue a little bit along that edge because it becomes quite dark along that, almost silhouetted along that edge later. So we've got the sort of the third layer in there now. So we'll have, we'll apply one more layer in a moment, or was it two more? I can't really remember to get the full sort of uh, intensity. And this was probably, in all fairness, was the biggest part of the painting, the, the most difficult part of the painting. If you can get this bit right, you're pretty much um, there with the rest of it. So I'm making a much darker brown now. So again, I'm using cadmium yellow. I'm using alizarin crimson with a touch of cobalt blue. And I've got a nice, rich, dark... Um, brown and I can cool it down a bit, grey it out a bit by adding more blue if I want to. And this is putting the final darks of the rocks in on the top of the mountain. So it's like I said, it's built up in stages just using my little Chinese brush here, which I love. I'm not sure if it's sable or goat hair. Somebody told me it was goat hair and I believed them and I, I still think it might be. Um, but I know you can get them in sable as well. Really hard wearing brush this, and it's so versatile. If I'm painting outside, I take it with me. It's, it's just, it does everything. It really does. Brilliant brush. And I think you can get them for about five or six pounds. They're, they're fantastic. Highly recommended. So we're just adding more of the same color across the mountains. And we're now just starting to build up that feeling of different faces of rocks and those faces which are in shadow and a lot cooler, not hitting the sunlight. I'm just varying that slightly, that wash there, by adding a little bit more blue to it. So don't keep all your colours the same. You know, try and um, introduce, make it warmer, shift it to cooler and then back to warmer again, just to try and make it more interesting for the viewer. If you, do, if you just paint everything in a flat colour, your painting will look flat at the end of the day. And then I'm going to put one final wash after this bit's done. Just the final darks going in here. And there's a bit more blue added to that. Probably fiddling unnecessarily now. <laughs> and so now I'm just adding another wash it's the final wash of our cobalt blue 
with a touch of alizarin crimson and it's the final wash on top of the on top of the mountain just to create the final darks so we've we've built up about we've, we've painted what about four layers i guess something like that um, so you've got to be patient when you're trying to get a, a result with watercolour sometimes. Sometimes, you know, it takes, you have to sort of come back and you won't get it all in one pass on the first hit. You have to be prepared to build some layers up. Um, and that kind of works in this painting, I think. And now I, I kind of, I like the way we've got that illusion of the sun hitting the top of the mountain. And that's just really what I wanted to demonstrate, our pure watercolour member. That um, you know how to do that because I thought that's really that will make his painting once he's got that in. The rest of his painting was very nice, uh, but uh, th this was uh, you know a part to get right because it was a real focal point in the uh, in the piece. Just fiddling around, just using a size, I think it's a size four uh, mop brush um, as a, what is it, a um, squirrel mop brush, just size four or five, use whatever you're comfortable with. The paper I'm using is about, oh gosh, what dimensions is the paper? Um, it's probably nine inches by 12 inches. I've got landscape, uh, post, uh, sorry, in portrait, a poster landscape. Now, on this piece of land here where the, the hills are, there's some yellow trees in there. So what I decided to do was put the yellow in first. And then after I've done that, I'm going to be going over it a much darker wash of colour and then leave some of the yellow behind, then try and paint it in later. Um, I wanted, It was just some of the, uh, the way some of the trees within the uh, forest are turning turning uh, sort of yellow earlier then I was going to start working my way down the page introducing all the lovely bright uh, or, uh, yellow colors now let me tell you the color I'm using here for that is I'm going to have a job to pronounce this so Arulin Arolin Ar Arolin I think that's how you pronounce it Arolin with a touch of um, cobalt blue oh sorry with a touch of um, Elizabeth Crimson, just to uh, make it a slightly pinker at times, uh, just to shift the colour around. Because if we, again, if we, oh, we, go, we go back to the same thing, if we paint it with just with the yellow, it would look boring. So uh, we need to look, look, at your, look at your reference image and just see where the subtle shifts are. As artists, we can, aff we can afford to exaggerate that slightly if we want to, to uh, you know, help us with our painting. So it was just a question of looking at the change in colour and then either pulling, you know, slightly exaggerating it, but or just painting along, you know, to, to get it uh, to where you want to be. So, yeah, so just sort of dabbing that on. It's looking pretty sort of like nothing's going to happen at the moment. But again, this this part of the painting as well is all about layers. Um, now, you, I guess you could easily just, I, I used it, Erolin, Erolin, Erolin. Glad I'm a job pronouncing that, I'm sorry. Um, but you could have used um, cadmium yellow. I'm sure that would have worked absolutely fine. Just don't use uh, sort of an opaque. It has to be kind of like quite a trans translucent. Cadmium yellow works fine for me. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's clear enough. It's, it's, trans it's, it's, um, it's not that opaque, so it works well. And then I just kept adding in um, bits of... Uh, no, I need to edit that. Okay, and as I come right down to the foreground here, I'm adding more um, Elizabeth Crimson to the mix. Oh, I'm just adding some blue in there. Yeah, I wanted, there were some little bits of green within the trees, and I wanted to get that into it, wet into wet, so I just started to let add a little bit of blue to it in places, just to tint the trees where they hadn't put, all gone yellow yet, uh, and add the... Uh, Let the colour sort of drift in, melt into each other, can move into each other, wet into wet. <coughs> Excuse me.
and it's very much of the same now really it's just a question of working across the paper sh shifting the colors so you don't keep them all the same and uh, painting the trees in this is the foreground the foreground is quite dark but i fancy putting this uh, coat of color underneath it first and then letting the next the cobalt blue drift into that so it was i just thought it looked fresher and more lively instead of just going in with one dark color So if you fancy, if you're watching this and it's on your, you know, you're, you're on YouTube and you fancy coming on to our website, www.purewatercolor.com, there's a link under the video. Um, feel free to come along. There's, uh, we, I, I do a, a, a challenge maybe once or twice a month. We haven't actually set a permanent time for them yet, but you can paint along one of my uh, videos or one of my painting, my plein air sessions. I provide the photograph for you to paint and you can paint it and then post your image on the website to, for me to have a look at. So if you fancy doing that, uh, feel free to come along and join in. And we have some great members there that uh, partake and uh, seem to get a lot from it. And they interact well together and encouraging and helping them each other sort of improve their watercolour technique. So if that's something you'd like to uh, do, feel free to come along and sign up. It's totally free to join. Now I'm adding the darks under the trees because obviously as it gets under the canopy of the trees it's a lot darker you can see and for that I'm just using the Aralin um, Cobalt Blue with a little touch of the uh, Elizabeth Crimson to sort of like grey it out slightly if I want to make it um, more neutral um, just to get that feeling of depth within the forest area. And I'm just sort of picking my way through the trees. But you've got to be careful you don't overcook this and you don't do too much because it's easy to lose the shapes. And then once you've added those darks, you're going to have a real job to actually retrieve it and get it back to where you want. So always bear that in mind. I also have to, uh, I think these are birch trees. I'm not an expert on trees at all, but I think they're birch trees. I'm sure somebody will put me right. So they all have white, whitish um, trunks. And they're all sort of sticking there. I didn't want to use masking fluid. I'm not a great fan of masking fluid. I know it, people can use it brilliantly, but I never had much success with it. So I made sure I was careful to just leave some of the white trunks. Uh, trunks. They are trunks, aren't they? Uh, tree trunks. So I could... Uh, yeah, so I was just careful to paint around them. And I was quite pleased to see this when I got to this stage here, the varied colour. And I was pleased to actually be getting this dark stage in because for me it starts to make it look more like uh, the, 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 the reference image. And it was starting to come alive a little bit. This is quite a slow, pr you've got to really, again, like I say, make sure you study the um, picture really carefully because you can't get rid of these darks once you put them in. You know, they're, they're there. And if you start putting them in the wrong places, then you're going to lose the shape of your painting and the shape of your trees, and then all your hard work is undone. So work slowly and methodically, um, and you won't go far wrong, really. Observation is key really on this one I think it's all about the colours so I'm just making up various mixes of green I'll just tell you the colours again with cobalt blue aerolin and a little bit of uh, alizarin crimson various mixes of that so it's not a complicated palette. The palette is one most people would have. And like I say, you could paint it with cadmium yellow. I don't see any problems with that at all. I'm sure somebody might say I can't, but I'm, I'm sure you can. I don't see that being a problem. I would anyway, if I didn't have the Aerolin. And in fact, that, that is a new addition to my palette since I've started using these Cotman colours. Because of course we use the, the Cotman watercolour watercolours here the student watercolour paints and I have found them to be as good as the artist quality 
and for me, I do find them a lot cheaper. Uh, for the big tubes, their sort of maximum price for a tube is five pounds, um, even for the high series ones. Um, light fastness, light fastness, I've been told is very good. Uh, no problems with that, and uh, and colour strength and usability of the paints are found is excellent. So. Uh, if you fancy saving some money, have a go with Cotman watercolour paints. So I'm just adding some nice light greens here now to the top of the canopy. As it goes up the hill, we're just uh, I'm looking down. We're looking more down on it slightly. This was a lovely painting. The minute I saw the photograph come onto my website, I thought that's a beautiful painting. Uh, the member in question, he has, he does some beautiful work. He really does, and um, it's a pleasure to be able to actually help out a bit and give some advice on it. Very prolific painter, a very capable painter. So now we can see the trees have started to put out their shapes. Now I could have started, I could have spent an awful lot of time on this. It'd be very tempting to look at the photograph and paint in every little bit of dark between each twig and draw the twigs out on the side. But I just wanted, I wasn't bothered about that. <clears throat> I just wanted to actually capture the overall image of the tree, the overall shape, sorry, of the tree. I wasn't really that bothered about trying to paint all the different, twigs and branches and stuff like that it's an impression of the scene it's not a photographic likeness if you like it's just an impression of it so this distant hill <coughs> is um, trees basically but I started off with uh, cobalt blue and some magenta in the in the top just to make it a nice bl uh, bluey sort of mauvey colour and then as I went down towards the tree line where the canopy of the tree starts, I started to add more green. I'm sorry about my head appearing there. Not a very nice shot for you. Just have to see, but I couldn't help because I need to get a bit closer because uh, it was a bit, I wanted to get that bit right. So it's quite greyed out at the top with lots of blue in it. And um, as I come down towards the, like I say, the canopy of the trees, I start to add more um, erolin to the mix to make it a bit greener so again we're talking about those subtle shifts in colour as you're painting not to be tempted just to paint everything flat blue grey because that's what it appears at the f when you study it first time the picture you know when you first look at it you think oh yeah it's just a blue grey colour we'll just paint that but if you really really look at it you'll see lots of colours in it so that's what, what I was trying to achieve here um, was to shift the colours um, slightly from blue green to sort of more of a warm green um, and so on I also have to be mindful to paint around the little yellow bits that have popped up um, here and there I enjoyed this bit because I was quite confident and by now that the painting was going to work out not too bad so it was quite a nice stage to actually um, you know, paint. But you still had to, you couldn't paint really, uh, you had to be quite controlled with the brush because you couldn't afford to paint over all the yellow bits because those yellow, those little yellow highlights are how they, how they are on the reference image. So um, I had to be careful not to um, paint over those. So it was a bit fiddly really. Um, yeah, so... Uh, if you fancy you get a go at painting this picture, this is going to be on my website soon as a um, exercise for people to do if they wish. It will it will be put up for a couple of weeks, two three weeks for people to paint and then post before the next one goes up. So um, if you fancy having a go, like I said, come away down to purewatercolor.com. There's a link underneath the description, and have a go. It'd be great to see some new members there.
I hate seeing myself, for some reason, when I'm watching myself paint like this with a very small brush, it makes me quite fidgety because I know I, I feel I should be using a much bigger brush, but you just couldn't in this circumstances. You had to be able to paint around these areas. I suppose if I masked them off, some would say, um, if I'd masked them off with masking fluid first, then I could have just painted over it a lot quicker. And that is a pretty good point. It would have actually probably helped quite a bit. So maybe I need to invest in some masking, masking fluid, I don't know. Be interested to hear your thoughts on masking fluid, actually. If anybody can leave any comments underneath the video regarding their experience of masking fluid, that would be really, really handy. Like I say, it's not something I've used uh, for maybe 25 years. I used it when I first started out painting, but uh, it's not something I've actually used for, like I say, 25 years or so. But I would be interested to hear what other people have to say about it. <coughs> Excuse me. At the end, what we'll do... Oh, my head's getting bigger. At the end, what we'll do is um, take the mask and tape off so we can see, you know, see a nice clean edge around the painting. And... Um, give you a better idea what it looks like if it was it had a mount around it. Oh, I really should have skipped some of this bit, shouldn't I? It's painful. Oh, well. I'm sure you can fast forward if it's boring, this bit. But this bit, actually, I actually enjoyed it, to be honest. It, it makes me fidgety to watch it, but I actually enjoyed painting this bit because it was, uh, I don't know, it's quite relaxing, changing the greens. It was all working at my speed. It wasn't drying very quickly, the wash, the edges. So it was just uh, a nice part of the painting to paint. Now we need to now we need to um, look at uh, putting in some of the darks here and there in the canopy of the trees, just to give them more depth. And again, it's all about studying that reference image. Um, that once you've got an idea where the darks are, you don't have to sort of uh, follow it slavishly, uh, but it just gives yourself, it just helps you to sort of see how they look. I think. And uh, that, that's one of the reasons why, you know, you just look at it and you get an idea where they are, then go off and paint. Because if you keep referring to the image, then your, your paint is going to be all sort of, you're going to be stop and start because you just, so just have a good look at your reference image first and get very familiar with it. And then put in the darks where you think they best fit, as long as it's something like the, the photograph, you're not going to go far wrong, I don't think. Darkening that edge a little bit was better because it was a bit too light. Where it hit against the other, other hillside with the darker trees. So just mixing up some of the warmer colours now, the um, Aerolin and Lizard Crimson, just to sort of make some pinky colours at the bottom of the trees, to put some of the textures in there, suggestions of uh, getting a little bit darker. So, you know, this would be a really good pit, uh, painting for 
you know, a beginner or intermediate pay, painter to take on. You know, you can simplify it a lot, um, but it will give you good practice. It will give you sky practice. It will give you uh, sort of landscape, you know, learning how to practice on how to paint mountains um, and get the sunlight on them, things like that. And then, of course, you come down and you've got the, um, the really green autumn trees. So it covers an awful lot of different sorts of subjects, really, uh, this one this one exercise so it would be a really good painting for anyone to um, spend some time on if you're learning to paint and I would say is when you do a painting don't always just have one go at it and if it doesn't turn out as you want think well then I'll finish with that because it's better to stick with it keep working on the same image and really understand what you're doing because that will help you bucket loads when you go on to moving on to different paintings so don't always sort of just think, well, I've painted it once, I don't need to paint it again. I remember when I was learning to paint, this is going back 30 odd years now, I would actually um, look at, uh, paint the same image many times. Um, and all available was all that was available to me when I learned was books, which was great, and it's a really great resource. But um, yeah, I used to paint the, the same image many, many times. And that really helped an awful lot to imprint it on my mind, to be, make it become really familiar to me. So we've created that nice illusion of depth underneath the trees now. So those foreground trees really push forward while that helps then to sort of set the trees towards the background to sort of become more sort of uh, blended and uh, not so prominent. And that was a crucial part of the painting again as well, as well with the top of the mountain, the foreground trees, getting them looking nice and fresh, which is really important. I just wanted to um, dull down the tree trunks a bit because they were a bit bright. Uh, so I just put a very pale wash of um, cobalt blue and a little bit of um, cadmium red, I think it was, or lizard crimson over it. Either would, would be fine. Just to... Um, make them sit back a bit because they were screaming out a little bit as white lines um, so that's quite important so that's basically the end of the painting I hope you liked it I'm about to uh, tear the tape off we can have a look at what the finished picture looks like and I think it gives you a better idea there you go of what that actually looks like um, it was a lovely painting to paint really enjoyed it um, I'm talking now for people in the forum if they paint this work you leave a question underneath the painting and I'll do my best to answer it. Um, hope you enjoyed it. And uh, there'll be some more demonstrations coming soon. So thanks very much for watching and bye for now.